If we look at the IgG that's produced by a large number of different people and pool it, um, we can detect in electron mi micrographs uh, pairs of IgG molecules that are binding to each other. This is a picture of dimers of IgG that are present in pooled plasma. On the left hand side are actual micrographs uh, and then on the right hand side of each one is a interpretation of the micrograph showing what is believed to be the actual uh, IgG pair more clearly. Extensive studies on these IgG dimers have been done by Tankersley and his collaborators and published in a journal, one of the papers was published in Molecular Immunology, in which they found there was an intriguing semi-logarithmic relationship between the fraction of dimers in the pooled plasma and the number of donors of the pooled plasma. So let's see what this means for the IgG repertoire. It means the IgG repertoire in a stable state is co-selected to be anti-anti-self. It's tightly regulated to resemble TS2 V regions. Then an IgG immune response will comprise two aspects, an anti-foreign aspect and an anti-anti-self aspect. The anti-anti-self aspects protects against any possible anti-self response. In an experiment done by Reginald Guczynski and myself, uh, we obtained data demonstrating the presence of anti-anti-self IgG in response to skin grafting. What we showed was that BL 6-anti-C3H binds to C3H anti-BL6 and BL6-anti-C3H binds to C3H anti-BL6 that had been absorbed with BL6 and vice versa. So you would think that according to a non-network paradigm the absorbed serum shouldn't contain anything that's specific. However, it does, and we see exactly uh, the result that shows that the response includes an anti-anti-self response. Here is the data uh, from that experiment, and you can see uh, that in both cases, if you look at the fine details, I won't go through it um, in detail, but uh, the, the large bars uh, demonstrating the presence of anti-anti-self antibodies in both the straight sera, uh, alloimmune sera, and also in alloimmune sera that had been absorbed against the immunogen. We see the same phenomena for a response to an ordinary protein antigen such as tetanus toxoid. And the next slide will show the actual results. Again, the uh, shaded bars are the ones that demonstrate the presence of an anti-anti-self response in a normal immune response and all the other bars of various controls. The theory also <coughs> provides us with an understanding of uh, the way HIV interacts with the immune system. HIV specific helper T cells uh, preferentially infected with HIV. This was postulated in uh, 1994 in the context of a co-selection model and it was demonstrated experimentally by Dowick and his collaborators in 2002. The HIV pathogenesis model is that HIV is infecting helper cells that are specific for HIV preferentially and that leads to a co-selection of HIV and the HIV specific helper T cells. 
So then in addition to the suppressor cells being mutually selected with helper T cells, you have a competing co-selection process of HIV with the helper T cells. That means that both HIV and the suppressor T cells are subject to the same co-selection criteria, namely interacting with as many helper T, cell, helper T cells as possible. This means that with time HIV resembles the TS2 population more and more. So HIV is then right at the heart of the entire system. Okay, so our, our HIV pathogenesis model is that HIV preferentially infects HIV-specific helper T cells. This co-selection of HIV and HIV-specific helper T cells. HIV evolves to be anti-anti MHC class 2. And HIV components that mimic the receptors of TS2 are selected. We have uh, supporting data from this, a paper that we published in Science in 1991, uh, where Tracy Kion uh, and myself found that mice immunized with cells from mice with a different MHC, um, but not immunized with HIV, made antibodies that bind to two different HIV components, GP120 and P24. The interpretation is that these antibodies are most simply anti-IJ antibodies that also are then anti-HIV. We have additional supporting data in an experiment that was done at uh, Immunoprecise Antibodies in uh, Victoria. Rabbits were immunized with GP120 of HIV in complete Freund's adjuvant and then twice in incomplete Freund's adjuvant on days 0, 14, and 28. The next slide shows ELISAs for serum taken at days 28 and 42 in response to those immunizations uh, in a rabbit. And the, the rabbit made antibodies to GP120, GP41, P24, and NEF, all of HIV. So even though they were immunized with only one of the HIV antigens, it made antibodies to all four, four of them. This is highly suggestive that those components are selected in a way that all of them resemble TS2. Here are the actual results, and uh, you see here titrations for the response against each of the four HIV antigens. And again, immunization with solely GP120 yields antibodies to all four. To reiterate, our model is that all of the HIV components are selected to resemble the receptors of TS2 cells. All of them are similar in precisely that regard. Antibodies to one are then antibodies to all. This brings us to a network theory based technology that for us at network immunology is particularly exciting. We treated black six mice with anti-anti-C3H and anti-C3H antibodies. Each of those stimulated a complementary population of T cells. Because they're being stimulated by complementary antibodies, this led to a new sable suppressed state in which the stimulated populations co-selected each other and the resulting mice were, had been changed in a way that was similar to them having both LAC6 and C3H repertoires of self-antigens. This is a stabilized immune system because of the greater diversity of self-antigens for which they are tolerant. And we found that this stabilized immune system was resistant to the induction 
of an inflammatory bowel disease, including, for example, colitis and Crohn's disease uh, in humans. So it was a mouse model for inflammatory bowel, bowel disease, and inflammatory bowel disease includes the two diseases that I just mentioned. Mouse model for inflammatory bowel disease. Mice are treated giving dextran sodium sulfate and a high fat diet. IBD is measured using three assays. Uh, the production of inflammatory cytokines, change in colon length and weight loss, and the treatment with the dual stimulus prevented inflammation in each of these three assays. So in conclusion, we can say that the symmetrical network theory is based on a small number of postulates. It's simpler than your Immunology 101 course in that regard, where you have to learn a very large number of facts. The theory resolves the IJ paradox. It predicts anti-IJ antibodies in an A anti B response and a, that bind to the anti IJ antibodies in the converse immune serum. And predictions of the theory are, in fact, being routinely validated at network immunology. Thank you for your attention.